Well, good afternoon. I promised when my study was a little bit tidier, I know it doesn't look tidy, but this is tidy for me, believe me, um, that I'd start doing some rig-based stuff. And um, one video I've been really wanting to do for a long, long, long time has been uh, hair rigging. Just the intri intricacies of hair rigging, the basics as well, how to hair rig, how to tie a knotless knot, but also taking it a step further as well, showing you some things that I think a lot of you might not have seen before or thought about. Um, and I'm going to show you some tank tests as well. So um, we're going to start with the basics and then we're going to move on hopefully quite quickly onto other, onto other parts of hair rigging as well. Just to get you thinking, by no means am I saying this is the only way to do it. I know everyone's got their own little opinions and um, even the top anglers, they'll say they're doing something and then three months later they've changed their mind and they're doing it in a different way and I'm, I'm, I'm exactly like that as well. So I just want to get you thinking about hair rigging and also perhaps just making you realise there's a bit more to it than simply whacking a band on a hair rig with a knotless knot. Before we move on, I must say that this is uh, specifically for sort of commercial fisheries um, with standard commercial fishery rules. So we're not allowed braid, um, coated leaders, stiff rigs and things that, that the specie boys would be using. Um, and um, although we take a lot of information and a lot of um, skills and everything from the specimen anglers, there's so many things that they can do that we can't on the venues that I commonly fish and manage commercial fisheries. So um, and not being able to use coated leaders and things like that does make your rig mechanics a little bit different and what we can and can't do. Plus they're after 20, 30, 40 pound fish and we're after um, generally fish up to 10 pound. You know, we do catch 20 pounders, but um, Primarily we're after numbers of smaller fish, carp, bream, tension, everything as well. So so um, F1s, everything. So so um, our requirements for a hair rig are generally a little bit different to what a specimen angler would, would do. But we take a leaf out of their book. I certainly do. I watch no end of um, specimen carp stuff. And um, if you don't, I suggest you do. Look at the underwater footage, look at things and really learn from those boys and girls because they they take things a whole lot further than what the match fraternity do and the pleasure angler fraternity do so i just thought to clarify that because on most venues i i fish we've got to use barbless hooks maximum of a size 12 and um, um a mono no braid so so that's that's the things we've got to um take into account when it comes to making our hair rigs um and also we're fishing things like um method feeder bomb um, uh, pellet waggler, pole, you name it, we're fishing all sorts of methods as well. So, um, and our hair rigs have to reflect that as well. So, without further ado, let's move on to the basics and then I'll quickly hope, hopefully, move on to some more interesting stuff as well. Right, anyway, this is my uh, hair rig. This is, a, I've got, um, I've got a, a sort of dumbbell, uh, dumbbell boily washer, wafter, whatever you like to call it on there at the moment, and that is just. A band, a band on a hair rig. Now that's how most shop bought hair hooks, hooks in Ireland will will come with a with a hook like that and a and a band just on a nice little loop. You notice it kicks off that way. Sometimes it'll kick off uh, either way, and it just makes your hook bait kick off unnaturally, especially with the lighter hook baits. I don't like the fact that you're never quite sure if your pellet's going to be there or there or wherever. So so I don't like the fact that it kicks off horribly as well. And it's hard to avoid that with a single overturn knot. But I actually like to do uh, a slightly different way of um, tying a hair rig. So um, I'll show you the two together. If you can see, the bottom one is how it would conventionally be hair rigged with a, just a, a little knot and it in a little tiny loop. And the top one, is not, there's not that little tiny loop. I actually tie it in a bigger loop and I have the knot right at the top, either halfway up the shank or right under the eye. Okay, and that keeps everything tucked out the way. I just find that more secure, the bait sits nicer, and it's less likely. I can really, really pull, and because the knot's right up there in the shank, it's less likely to come undone. And there's nothing worse than catching a load of fish and you're not coming undone where it's attached to your band. So without further ado, I'll show you how to tie the conventional way of um, tying a band in a hair rig, and then I'll show you my way. Just so, just to say the comparison, it's just a tiny little tweak um, and it's by no means my uh, idea this. I've actually been doing it for, well, as 
as long as I've been going to white acres, I suppose. Um, I le originally learned how to tie a herring this way by um, Neil McKinnon, a good friend of mine, Fishermania champion. Um, and he showed me that and got me really thinking. And um, ever since he showed me, I've never tied a band on um, any other way, really. So, uh, so thanks, Neil, for that. <laughs> but I'm going to use um, 020 line which is seven and a half pound. O20 is normally about between six and eight pound. O20 is generally the most used diameter for bomb and method feeder and, and heavy sort of pellet waggler fishing. So, uh, and a size 12, which again is probably the most common size of hook to be using for um, uh, eight mil pellets and, and proper carp and everything, method feeder fishing and what have you. So that's what I'm going to be using today. Uh, that's an MXC3 and I, so I've actually got, got one there already. So, first things first, we're going to use a band. Um, now, there are other things we can use, which I'll come to later, and I'll cover in a lot more detail in a bit. So we've got bands of different sizes, and then we've got um, uh, quick stops and rapid stops and super stops. Um, they've all got different, different sorts of names for um, going through softer baits and bread and boilies and things as well, if you drill them. And then we've got spikes and pins as well. And they're all perfectly viable ways of hair rigging baits um, different hook baits depending on what you're using and what what you're trying to achieve really and I use them all so um, so we'll come to that in a bit hopefully so uh, oh and let's get a band let's get a, just a normal sort of four mil band there all right right then first things first I'm going to just thread the band on on the hair like that and then no way to do this is to double up the line and then fold it over itself Oop, where are we fold it over itself and then pass it through its through the loop okay so you get a nice little loop there okay nice little loop I'm just checking on my camera that so that's in focus yeah and then you can either pull it tight and some people will use a little spike or a pin to pull it down so you get a bit tighter down to it. But you can just help prise it down so, so, so it's the size that you want. And then and pull that nice and tight. Okay. And there is our, is our band in place. Some people tie right up to the band. Now uh, we'll come to that in a bit but there's a reason why I don't like to do that. Um, but there you are. So that's it. Just trim it off, and that's that's the end of our uh, band ready for for our hair rig. So all we have to do is go in from the back of the hook, go through, pull that all the way up. Now this is when you can decide what length of hair you want. Now, in general, I'd like to have it just a, a couple of mil away from the base of the hook, but some people. And there's some situation when you want a really long hair. Um, sometimes you want multiple baits on there, but sometimes you just want a lot of separation between the hook and the hook bait. So um, there's no hard and fast rule, um, and it's worth having different ones tied up for different situations. So, uh, but that's what we've got there. This is where a bit of dexterity comes in. You need to be able to hold the band or whatever you've hair rigged and the hook, and I try and hold it as far down as possible so I can see as much of that shank as possible. Yeah, as much as that shown. So there it is, and it was, that's all secure, nothing can move, okay? And all we do, I like to whip down, some people whip up, but I like to whip down. And we just whip one, two, three, four. Now I don't count, actually, <laughs> even though I am counting. I just like to go as far down as I can go. Some people just go seven or eight times, but I like to go as far down. If I can get level with the point of the hook and just a mil or two lower, I really like that because I just think everything's nice and secure that um, done that way. Okay, so I've and I've whipped down and I'm trapping it there now, so nothing can come undone. And all you do is go back through with the tag end, with the end of the line, back through from the back to the point, and pull it. Okay, now this is where you have to be careful because if you slip, sometimes that can unravel. But if you just pull it nice and tight. There you are. And that is it. That's our hair rig. That's our knotless knot on a hair rig. But as you can see, that band is kicking off. It's not straight. It's not where I want it to be. Okay? It is kicking off. Um, a lot of people won't be won't be bothered at all about that. But to me, I don't I like 
I like my hook bait to be where I want it. So, uh, but anyway, but that's our hair rig. Nice and simple. Don't know if that's going to pick up on there, but that's our hair rig. Okay, and it's nice and. But that, if I pull, that could potentially come undone because um, it's only a single overland knot. If you tie a double knot, it's a real big, horrible knot. So, so, uh, but there we are. That's our hair rig. Very, very simple. Very, very quick to tie. Okay, so we'll. Um, Put that one to one side. Let's get another band. And I'll just show you my way of doing it. I'll try and be a bit quicker this time as well. Take a length of line. Doesn't matter how long for this. Put that out of the way. Okay. Tie the band in a bigger loop, basically. That's all we're trying to do. So I've threaded the band on. Double up the line. Double it over. Pass it through itself to create that all important loop. And I'm going to tie it down. Now rather than a little tiny loop, rather than a little tiny loop, I'm going to pull it down so I've got a biggish loop. Could be as much as a centimetre. Okay. Now some people use little uh, measuring devices. You get a little stompho device or somebody have two little pins. But I just do it by eye. I'm more than happy to do it by eye. Um, I've been doing it that long that I kind of know how long that loop is. But I would say that's probably seven or eight mil as opposed to three about three mil on on the one i tied earlier so we'll just trim that off okay so we've got a biggish loop there and i'm just going to get another size 12 hook make sure i don't drop it thread it on through the back okay pull it all the way through okay now the beauty of having it on the longer loop you see where that knot is all I want to do, I'll either have it halfway down the shank and whip above it and below it, or sometimes right on. It doesn't. That's why I don't mind doing it by eye so much, because I don't mind where that knot is, as long as it's not down by, by the hook end. It's going to be covered by the whippings. Whatever way I do, it's going to be covered by the whippings. Okay, and I like the the point facing me, facing upwards. And I'm just going to continue what I did before. So right, that's two over, and then, and then I'm over the knot now. I'm going to whip all the way down. There we are. Okay. Right, pass it back through from the back to the front. And there we are. Now that is as much more how I would like it because there's no knot between the whippings and the band. Yeah? You see that if I spin that a little bit? There's no knot between the whippings and the band. That's perfect. I'm not too bothered about a slight bump where the whippings are. I'm more bothered about this being nice and strong and secure. So there you are, that's my standard band. And that's how I tie all my bands these days. Um, sometimes tie up to the hook, sometimes a little bit of distance. Um, but that's how I tie it. I know some people have got a way of tying it where you don't have the knot at all and the, and it's all up there but I found that can pull undone if you're not careful and I just find it a lot fiddlier and takes me another 30-40 seconds to tie. So uh, I'm more than happy with that type of arrangement and I can tie that really really fast and when I'm tying hundreds of hook lengths uh, <laughs> it makes all the difference being able to tie them nice and fast as well. So uh, a no nonsense banded hook length absolutely ideal Let's move on to the next one. Right, we're going to move on to hair rigs incorporating these. Now these come on a little plastic sprue and you just snap them off and uh, you tie them to the end of your hair rig and so you've got a spike that constantly stays on. Very, very useful. Um, these ones are called super stops, they're called push stops, quick stops, rapid stops. Everyone seems to have a, a name for them, uh, depending on which company you buy from. Um, they're essentially the same, although um, I do particularly like the Matrix ones, I'm going to say that, but I do because the hole is slightly bigger. Um, the ones I used to use, the ones I've got um, on uh, this hair rig for instance, they're a little bit thinner, but also they're a lot. The hole in the middle of them um, is really, really small. And actually, um, with something I'll come on to next, you'll see why um, that small hole can be a problem. This has got a slightly, slightly bigger hole, and it just makes threading them a lot, lot easier. And um, we'll come to that in a minute. But um, right, then, if I show you this, this is a, a hair rigged. I'm not going to show you how to tie it because it's essentially the same as what we've already done with the banding. Okay. 
Now as you can see again, let me just twizzle that you can actually see that that stop there. It's okay, but it's kicking off a bit. And with something soft like me or even bread and that, because it's kicking off at an angle, it could um, make the hole bigger and actually um, lead to the hook bait coming off a bit quicker as well. But if you, it will straighten with the bait on, but I do feel that that could potentially compromise the hook bait a little bit and lead to it coming off a bit quicker. Just a tiny, tiny little thing there, but it's, it's um, and also, as I've said before, that little knot, that little knot there is susceptible to, um, to coming undone, especially if that gets caught in a keep net or whatever. So what I often do now is um, I'll double it up, just like I did with the band, and I'll double it up on a big loop, and then you've got a doubled up bit, a doubled up bit there, and the, the knot is right up there. The knot is right up there, out of the way. And this is all double, so that there's no chance of any little knot pulling undone or anything. That's really, really secure. So that's not going anywhere. Um, and it's a doubled up bit of line, which I don't have an issue with. And um, But that's not too bad. Um, and I take it a stage further again, by, um, if you just twizzle the line, I might have to show you a little cutaway of me twizzling the line. You get a lovely looking hair there, um, but that's all twizzled, nice and neat. And uh, that's the way I've been using doing hair rigs for a long, long time with baits like meat and, and bread and things. But I'll show you some tank tests because it's really interesting to show just how stiff that is and how, how, how that makes your hook bait behave because it's a stiff hair as opposed to a supple hair. Now, how do we make a supple hair? Well, you don't make it from mono, you make it from a soft material. So um, braid, dacron, cotton, anything like that. This is just a nice cheap braid. I've had this years and years and years, uh, Dynaflex uh, from Ultima, which is really, really old stuff, but um, that's 08, uh, sorry, 06. Um, if you can get 06 braid, that's, that's, that's ideal. Once that's wet, it becomes ever so supple and so much more supple than nylon. So, um, and that's what we're gonna make a hair from. Now I've got one that I've done. Here's one that I've done with just a single strand. And all I do with that, I just tie my stop on um, as I would normally, and then um, whip it around the shank. And then I do my knotless knot over the top of it. Pretty straightforward, I hope. But uh, I might have to do a little video just to show you. But there's, there's, there's all different ways of incorporating that hair and then whipping over the top of it. And because it's a material, it will bite into itself and it won't slip um, as much as like mono and that will. So I don't mind that being there like that. That's not gonna come undone. I've done I've done experiments on both. I can pull a, a mono knot apart if it's a single overhand, but a single overhand in some sort of braided material or Dacron or whatever, that, that doesn't seem to come apart. So, uh, so anyway, a single strand. And the, the difference between that and a stiffer hair or a stiff normal mono hair has to be seen uh, underwater. So let's just show you some tank tests and let's just see how good that looks. Okay, we're starting off with the stiff hair. You can see the hook and the hook bait both moving in unison because uh, that's a, a normal mono hair rig. But wherever you move the hook, the hook bait follows. So that's gonna be useful, but sometimes you might want a bit of flexibility in there. So let's drop in the other hair rig quickly. And this is my soft hair. There you are. You can see the hook is moving independently. And then because of the soft supple hair, the hook bait can move independently as well. So that's an immediate difference between the mono hair and the softer, more supple hair. Let's put them both in at the same time and just show you. There's a stiff hair on the left and there's the uh, soft hair on the right. Feels like I'm law fishing at the moment, doesn't it? <laughs> so it's really clear to see how nicely um, the supple hair will move and, uh, and how the hook bait and the hook will move independently. Um, compared to the normal sort of mono hair and um, the hook and the hook bait moving at the same time. Okay, that's good stuff. Right, I'm just going to show you how to tie a twizzle as well. Um, because it is something some people take for granted. How to tie it. There's a stop there. And let's get some mono. But not everyone can tie a twizzle. I know everyone has to be shown once. So, okay, let's start twizzling. Sometimes it just takes a little bit just to get started. Oh, there we are. We got it started there. Hold one bit and spin the other bit. 
or spin them both in opposite directions. There, see, that's already twizzled together. Yeah. And to get a tighter twizzle, just pull it and then release it and then you'll get a tighter twizzle. There's a nice tip for getting a nicer tight twizzle. See that? And then just pinch it to hold it in place. Then do your overhand loop there, pass it through and pull it down to secure it in place. Give it a snip and there's your stiff twizzled loop. Really neat and really strong as well. Okay. Well, I suppose I really should show you how to tie um, a softer hair. So uh, I've already threaded it on, which is the hardest, fiddliest part. So uh, uh, that can take a few seconds, especially if your eyesight isn't so good. The type of stop you use can make a difference because like I said, these ones have a, a reasonably big hole compared to some. So, uh, so it wasn't quite so, so difficult to thread. And um, you can use anything for this, cotton or, or Dacron or braid or whatever. It's just something nice and soft but very, very thin and strong. So uh, I'm just going to tie it in a little over a knot. I'll try and be as quick as I can. So easier said than done. There we are. Always takes longer on camera. Okay, and there's, there's my knot. I'm just going to tighten it down with a needle just, so, just to shorten it down a bit. There we are. Tighten that down, I'm just going to quickly snip that, there we are, cleanly through. And uh, so there we are, that's our uh, that's our hair. And there's different ways of doing this, you could just tie it with a single uh, a single knot above or anything like that, but I'm just going to, I'm going to tie a, a, basically a smaller, simpler knotless knot. Thread it through, on the back end, exactly the same as before. Get the hair length exactly where you want it. So I'm going to say I'm going to use this for bread. So I want quite a nice long hair. You can see that? Quite a nice long hair there. Hopefully you can see that. Um, with baked side expanders and meat and that, I might have a nice short hair. Uh, so that's a nice long hair there. And then I'm just going to whip it just a couple of times, two or three times, and then back through. Nice and simple. So that's just secured in place basically. It doesn't have to be a brilliant knot because it's just the hair. So there you are. There you are. So that's our hook with the hair on. And then I'm just basically just tie a knotless knot over the top of that. So let's just do that very, very quickly just to show you the full, the full process. And then grab that. Grab the hook again, thread the line back through from the back, pull it down. And it doesn't matter how long the tag is at the bottom end there. There's a tag end at the back there. You see that there? Doesn't matter where that is really, or how long it is, because we're going to trim that afterwards. And hold in the hair and it all together nice and low down again. Nice and low down again. I'm just going to whip. As we have done before. Nice and lay down. I do it quite quickly and roughly. So we just quickly whipped it through the back, like so. There we are. Okay. And then that's what we're left with. That's what we're left with. And obviously, we just trim that. I'm going to have a floor full of line by the end of today. Standard stuff for my office. And there you are, that is the, the finished article. Nice, supple, soft, floppy hair. Now, there's times where you want a nice stiff hair, and there'll be times where you want a nice, very, very supple hair, lots of movement in the hook bait. And sometimes when you want the hook bait and the hook to move at the same time. Let's just try and put these alongside each other. There you are. I think the difference is pretty clear to see. There's a time and a place for stiff hairs and, and supple hairs. So, uh, and you just have to think what you want your hook bait to do and uh, and how you want um, to hook the fish really. So, uh, but anyway, we'll move we'll move on. We'll do some tank tests and we'll show the two and how they work underwater. So that's three discs of hair rig bread there on a soft hair. 
and there's the other one on a normal mono hair. That's actually standing on end, isn't it, when it's settling like that? Whereas the softer hair, obviously neither are fully swelled up yet, but that's uh, three discs of medium sized bread that's had a, a bit of a squeeze. You can see the separation between the bread and the, and the hook and the difference uh, the supple hair and the normal mono hair makes. That's a, single, um, that's a single length of mono as well, not doubled up. You see that? You see how much movement there is in the other one? Um, wiggle it around. Just with three discs of medium sized bread that have been compressed a little bit. And this is the exact same bread, probably about a minute later. It's really swelled up. The one on the uh, softer hair is, looks like it's swelled up a little bit more than the one on the uh, on the normal mono hair, but they're both um, completely filling the hair, aren't they? So that one's still quite rigid, and the softer hair, there's still quite a bit of movement in there, like a Chinese dragon or something. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's the same bread. It looked really compressed, didn't it, at the start? It didn't look well matched, did it, with the length of hair? But now look at it, now it's swelled up. So that's another thing just to show you really how much it swells up and uh, if you use too short a hair with uh, two or three discs of, uh, of bread and this is medium sliced bread so thick sliced bread would be um, even more exaggerated it could actually um, obscure the hook or work its way off the hair I suppose. So um, yeah always use a long hair if you're using bread. But uh, yeah that's interesting stuff isn't it? Right then, next up is my favourite way of hair again, um, especially if I'm using wafters and boilies, um, and that's using a spike or a bayonet. Um, there's, there's two main types, there's, the, there's this, like the twisted wire version, and then there's the solid sort of uh, spike. Some people used to use basically the shank of a hook and an eye, but people, it's moved on, you can actually buy them now with a spike. I personally prefer the the spike version rather than the twisted wire version but um, everyone has their own preferences I find the twisted wire can sometimes bend um, whereas they're nice and rigid but um, both are pretty good and they're brilliant for mounting um, boilies and uh, wafters and that I prefer that to a band I just think you get better presentation and it's just when you see I'll show you some tank tests and you'll see how nicely they work when you're using a, a, a spike or a bayonet um, the only problem with them is that's the only thing you can use in them. You can't suddenly switch to using meat with them or sweet corn or bread or whatever. They're only good for um, hard boilies. And, and obviously your boilies, if your boilies are a little bit too hard and dry, you can't push the spike in anyway. So it takes a bit of practice to press it in. I use the back of my nail and just help push them in. But when, when you get them right, they're brilliant. I, I just find them such a nice way of putting a hook bait on. And the way I do them, there's so much movement and the hook just looks the hook bait just looks perfect so uh, I'll show you a way that some people use to tie them I'm not going to actually show the tying process this time I'm just going to show you the end result if I can find it somewhere here da, 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 da. here we are this one right now a lot of people will tie it just like an eyed hook but you can see that's really stiff yeah now now the way I've already showed you how to tie a loop um, abandon a loop um, is the way I also like to tie these uh, spikes as well. So if I just pick up one, another one I've uh, put that to one side. This is the second one I've done. Now this is, again, I've tied it, but I've tied it in a loop. You see that? You can see that's just so floppy and it's just wobbling all over the place. There's so much movement in there, yeah? And that's exactly what you want. You want that to be able to move freely. You really want that to move because that means your hook bait can move. Okay? And what I'm going to do, I'll put some hook baits on so you can see it again. I'll put a 9mm hook bait on. Pop it in. And um, obviously, if you're banding, you're often banding it that way. But because I'm spiking, I actually like to go in from, from the end. I just prefer it to go in the end of the cylinder. And then with the back of my nail, just push it in. There you are. And there's my hook bait. Look how wobbly that is. That's beautiful. See how much movement there is there? That's absolutely ideal. And it'll look even better underwater because it means the hook bait can sit like that. And then the hook the hook will sit flat on the back on the bottom and the hook bait will just waft around on top. Okay? Um so that's that one. So let's try the other the other method. 
again I'm just going to push it in push it in with the back of my hand now and there you are hey right, already you can see see that stiff you can see the stiffness there it's got a bit of movement because it's a big 9mm hook bait but it is pushing away and there's there's very little movement there if that's sitting on the bottom then it's constantly going to be pushing away and it's going to it's a, there's a lot of rigidity in there okay compared to compared to this one let's put them both in the same in the same plane there you are. that's the stiff one and that's my uh, hinged one so much more movement there okay so they're my two hook baits let's do some tank tests and just show you exactly why I think that is so much better to be able to have all that movement in that pin or bait spike okay this is a 9mm wafter on a size 12 hook uh, a normal mono hair and a, a, bait bit, a bait pin or bait spike that's been tied on um, normally like you tie on a, an eyed hook. Okay, and as you can see, wherever the, uh, the hook goes, the hook bait follows. Uh, my heating's just come on, so you might hear a bit of buzzing, but it is uh, minus two outside. <laughs> okay, and this is where it gets really interesting. Look how much movement there is in, in this one because I've tied the, uh, the pin or the spike in a loop, so there's loads of movement there and the hook actually lies flat and the 9mm hook bait actually sort of sits proud wafting around so the hook sits flat and the wafter just sits on top of that hook that looks absolutely beautiful that to me lots of movement but it also conceals the hook let's see how they both look together there we are look at the difference between those two both hooked in the end of the cylinder but the one which I prefer is obviously on the right that's sitting flat whereas the other one uh, um, can sit any old how really and look at that the actual point is facing down it looks a bit more likely to, to sort of uh, snag any sort of debris on the bottom actually it's nice to see how they both sink as well one sinks like that and then the other one sinks like that so these are semi buoyant hook baits so they are going to fall nice and slowly under the weight of the hook and also the uh, bait spike so if I'm bottom fishing I would definitely prefer the presentation on the right but if you're fishing off the bottom, maybe you want the stiffer hair because you don't need the advantage of the of the hook lying flat. Okay, and I've got a banded one as well, just a conventionally um, banded 9mm wafter as well, exactly the same hook bait. It'll be a bit lighter, a bit slower sinking because it hasn't got the weight of the, the pin or the spike. There we are, so that's a banded hook bait. Again, it sinks slower and it definitely sits differently when it hits the bottom. So it doesn't matter what I do with the uh, with the band, it sits differently every time. It might be better, might be worse, but um, it's nice to know what your hook bait is actually doing um, on the bottom. But it's definitely sitting differently. Okay, good stuff. Right, there's one final little thing I want to show you. I'm not going to waffle on too much. I've gone on way too long already, uh, so I'm not going to dwell on this one too much. But it's another option, a little variation on the bait spike theme. Um, it's something I picked up off uh, actually a guy I was coaching. Um, he was very very good at, um, he was actually a specimen carp angler so he was very good at ledgering and feeder fishing in general I was actually coaching him on the pole but he showed me a way that he hair rigs when he's bomb fishing um, in matches and um, I thought it was very very clever and it's something I have messed around with a little bit but he sowed the seed in my head to try and get me to um, experiment with it a little bit more and that's doing basically a carp angler's D-rig but on a match hook length. I'm just using a, a bait pin in this one. The actual bait spikes in a D, there's so much movement there and obviously it's much higher up the shank. Um, when we're traditionally hair rigging our hook bait comes off the end of the hook generally but this is going off, off the side of the hook and that's there's actually a bit of mileage in that I think and to do that basically you you um, tie, your, tie your knotless knot and then I don't know if I can show you this but that bit of line is pushed back through the eye. So the end of the D there, that bit there, is just blobbed with a lighter. And that just creates a, uh, it just flattens it like a mushroom. And that will stop it coming back through the eye. So you can make that D as big or as little as you want. Very clever, very faffy, very fiddly. But you never know, there might be a bit of mileage in that for your own fishing. 
certainly something to play with, certainly something the carp on the venues I see, or the venues I fish, they, they don't see very often, if at all. So, uh, and we're always trying to outwit these fish. So there we are, something to think about using a D-rig with, uh, with mono. It's a bit fiddly, because you have to use a lighter and blob the end of it, you have to be very, very careful. Um, obviously you don't want to melt the rest of the rig. So I've been out with this, it definitely works, so definitely catching it. Do I catch better than a normal bait spike? Because I'm flitting between venues all the time, I never get time to sit on a venue and really work out what is the best way. So, uh, but it, this way it does work, and it's another option that some of you might be interested in trying. This is it on the uh, on the D. Again, look at that. It's pivoting around from the middle of the shank. Again, it sits over the hook, concealing the hook completely, and the hook can lie nice and flat. Imagine a fish coming from above, especially in clear water, and there's a lot of movement in that hook bait. Look how natural that is. The hook can move, but uh, it just sits in that D lovely. Yeah, so that's a D rig presentation. Something different. I like the look of that, don't you? Well, there we are. That's my uh, that's my in-depth guide to hair rigging. Hopefully it showed you a few little different bits and tips and tricks and really got you thinking about what your hook bait should be doing underwater, what you want it to do underwater. The shop bought hair rigs are perfectly good. I catch fish on them and I've been out with so many people that do catch fish on them as well. But you want to take your fish in a stage further or if you just want to tie your own hook lengths, um, then it's worth having an experiment. Longer hair, shorter hairs, flexible hairs, very supple hairs or stiff hairs. There's so many little bits and bobs we can be messing around with and I'm sure, and I know, messing around with those will add more fish to your catches. And it's, if nothing else, it gives you something to experiment with and it's very, very satisfying. If you've tied a hair rig of your own and you've got ultimate confidence in the way you've tied it and the, what's happening with it underwater. So I hope you enjoyed that. Don't forget to click like and subscribe if you're not already a subscriber. There's loads more content to come. Hopefully I can show you some more riggy stuff in my uh, semi-tidy tackle room um, over the coming weeks. <laughs>